I stumbled across Aircrete through watching a video called Steve's Dome Home on Steve Vereen's YouTube channel. The beauty of the architecture and the low cost claims and the thermal efficiency had me hooked. So I embarked on a research study at YouTube University and binged all things Aircrete. Along the way, I discovered Dome Gaia, Honeydew Carpenter, and Aircrete Harry, among others. In this video, I will take you through my experience with this fascinating material and show you some of my experiments and how I ultimately integrated this material into our tiny cottage. At the end, I will share what I've learned and my current estimation of Aircrete as a building material. First of all, what is Aircrete? Well, Aircrete is a cement product made from trapping microscopic air bubbles inside of a Portland cement matrix. This is done by mixing Portland with a shaving cream consistency foam, which can be either made with dish detergent or more industrial foaming agents like Drexel. And I'll put a link to these things in the comments section below. The resulting material has an R value of six per inch, which is pretty astounding. For context, foam board would have an R value somewhere between 3.5 and 5.5 per inch. It should be noted that foam board also loses R value at high temperatures. It's also expensive, emits toxic off gas, and will not break down in the environment. Aircrete is inert, super insulating, fireproof, insect proof, mold proof, and has more thermal mass than foam board or spray foam. There are some limitations with Aircrete. Vertical lifts cannot exceed 12 to 16 inches per pour, otherwise you'll have compressive deflation. That means that in an 8-foot wall, you're going to have a cold joint. There are several building methods that overcome this limitation, and I'll discuss those yet to come in this video. Now, Aircrete is light as concrete goes, however, you still have to lift a 92-pound sack of concrete. The entire batch of Aircrete, one bag's worth, ends up weighing fairly close to 200 pounds and so requires two people to lift it or a lot of transferring into smaller containers. Also, the precision of the recipe is critical. You must weigh your foam by volume frequently to make sure that your batches are consistent. And if you do not, then you may have a bad batch, which could be quite a nightmare. A bad batch ends up being soft and crumbly. The mines behind that first dome home that caught my attention can be found at Dome Gaia. They have developed a building system that is similar to the Inuit approach to building igloos, either by bulk forming and cutting blocks or by forming individual blocks that make bricks, which can then be assembled using a mortar of aircrete with a polymer additive, a thin set additive mixed into it. Once the building is finished, a skin of mesh, like a grain sack, a feed sack, something like that, is applied to both the inside and the outside using that same polymer fortified mortar. Once that's on and cured, plaster on the inside, stucco on the outside completes the building. They offer several workshops and a full complement of tools, and there's a link down in the description to get to their site. If you use the code RADICAL, you can save 25 bucks off whatever you purchase over there. Their method is great for domes and could be adopted to a rectilinear structure. It requires a good bit of plastic, however, and I like to avoid that whenever possible. The Honeydew Carpenter has done some interesting work in creating a panelized system for aircrete. He uses aluminum studs and half-inch hardware cloth as reinforcement within that form and pours about a 24 inch by 4 inch thick 8 foot long section of air at a time. These then can be secured into channels to make the wall. This approach solves the 1 foot per day issue. The cost and the mining required to use all of that metal is kind of a non-starter for me, but the system is very interesting and seems to work pretty well. Plastering over the metal studs is also something that concerned me, and I would probably add a diamond lath mesh to those joints myself. He is currently working on a full house on their new homestead, and so you should check out his YouTube channel if you want to follow along with that.
Aircrete Harry's approach seems to be to build a form, usually something inflatable or, or domed, and then spray the aircrete onto the outside. He also offers workshops from time to time. So here was my bright idea. After watching all these other practitioners and their methods, I thought it would be fun to innovate a panel that could be used like a SIP to attach to the outside of a frame structure. And I thought that perhaps if we used the same idea that's employed in the manufacture of drywall, we might be able to make a panel which we could then just attach. So I looked around my area at uh, various reclaimable materials and things like that, and I thought about that row cover that you'll find in abundance on every organic farm. Uh, farmers will use it for a season or two, and then once it has holes, it's not going to keep the bugs out that you're trying to keep off of your cabbage, and so it ends up in a big heap. And I thought, what if I were to line a form? with that material and then pour the aircrete into it and wrap the row cover material over that form, perhaps the aircrete would adhere to that row cover and it would act like the paper on the outside of a sheet of drywall. The paper gives structure to the drywall, the crumbly gypsum on the inside is held together and rigid by the paper. I thought perhaps that would work with aircrete and the row cover as well. Unfortunately, it was a catastrophic failure. It looked pretty good coming out of the form, but then when I tried to move it, it cracked right in half and the row cover failed to bond to the aircrete at all. I think there may be a good way to do this, but I have yet to try it. My current thinking is that next time I would probably use concrete reinforcing mesh, the low cost slab reinforcement that you can pick up at any big box store and pour into my form let it cure, pull the forms, and then adhere grain sack material to the outside of the pour with thin set, and then flip it over and also adhere the other side with that same material. And this might possibly produce a panel with R36 insulation value that could then be moved and cut and attached with construction screws to the outside of a timber frame. Grain totes are readily available. One of the quirks of the organic certification is that if you put organic feed in a grain sack, you then can't reuse that for more grain, which is ridiculous, but it causes a waste stream pileup of that polymesh material, which could easily be cut into desired shapes and, and then plastered to the outside of those panels. If I can make it work, there is a potential for a shippable system that would have R36 insulation, be totally fireproof and bug proof, and cost less than a dollar per square foot of wall surface. Being a skin flint cheapskate, when I got into making aircrete, rather than buy a known or functional tool to produce my foam, I decided to build my own. And based on some designs I'd seen on YouTube, I created a machine that produced pretty good foam, but the production rate was very low. And so here is a brief rundown of that machine. A nipple to accept the air hose from the compressor, pressure regulator through a quarter inch pipe nipple into the chamber that will house all the foaming agent. Air pressure continues on to that T valve there, which is actually an eductor Soap solution is forced out of the bottom and then drawn into the airstream here by virtue of the fact that the aperture on the air inlet here is drilled down to a sixteenth of an inch and the flow from here is a quarter and the flow out is a quarter. So it should pull the solution in, run it down the long hose to the mixer and then in this chamber here I have the expanded stainless steel wool that will agitate the foaming solution and foam should come out of here. This may explode. I finally ponied up and bought Dome Guy's Dragon XL foam generator and that made multi-batch production feasible. 
Their machine works great, but one must still verify foam density with frequent checks between batches to ensure you don't get a bad bat. With my intern Duncan's assistance, I poured a six inch layer of aircrete onto the floor of our cottage as an insulating layer. I floated out the surface and troweled it smooth before adding row cover to the wet surface. My hope was that I would be able to tile directly onto the cured surface, but the aircrete was of low compression strength. I resolved this by packing a two inch layer of chicken wire reinforced deck mud onto the surface. Deck mud is uh, five parts sand to one part Portland and just enough water to moisten all the ingredients. This is the material that we use to slope shower drains in preparation for tiling on shower floors. Alternately, one could lay out diamond lath and pour uh, self-leveling cement on top of that, and that should provide sufficient rigidity and spread the load enough that the aircrete does not get compressed. I still like the idea of aircrete but I've yet to find a technique that really fits all of my criteria. The floor I poured has been flawless thus far, but a low cost wall system that could be attached to the exterior of a timber frame is still a goal unreached. Dustcrete is still my favorite low cost, efficient, simple building system. However, there certainly is a place for aircrete if I can work out some kinks and how I would like to use it. It's a bit fickle to work with, but there is no other material that has all of the properties that Aircrete does. Now, many natural builders shun the use of Portland cement, but to me, with my priorities, if we can use a limited amount of that high energy footprint material, but in the end have a building that has extreme energy efficiency, the calories burned to create the Portland in the first place will be made up for in the lifetime of the building with its energy savings. For me, the energy cost to produce Portland is more acceptable than the toxicity of petroleum-based alternatives. Let me know in the comments what you think of Aircrete and if you've tried playing with this material yourself. Don't forget to like and subscribe.